Hey, what's up guys, Danny here, and in this video I wanted to talk about which CPU processor is right for you, which one you should buy, which one will fit your preferences, and which one will offer you the best value for your dollar for specific scenarios. The reason why I wanted to make this video was because I get many people asking me these types of questions. They'll say, hey Danny, I want to play this game and that game, should I get this CPU or I or I want to be gaming on my computer, but I also am interested in doing content creation like video editing. Should I buy an i7 or will an i5 be enough? Or what about if I just want to be streaming on the side, then which CPU should I buy? So in this video, I'm going to be covering those topics as to which CPU you should buy in regards to specific scenarios and pr or preferences. Also, for your discretion, I just want to say that if I don't mention or include a specific CPU in this video, or if I recommend one product over another, it's not because it's necessarily bad, but it may not work the best for whatever scenario I'm talking about. I'm not here to start an Intel vs AMD war, because shopping by a specific brand or manufacturer would be a bad choice. You always want to keep your options open as possible. They both make great processors, and you can use this video as a guideline as to which one may suit your preferences and needs the best. So at the bottom of the barrel, we have the light gamer or media machine. In this scenario, we have an individual that doesn't necessarily necessarily play the most demanding games or new AAA titles. They just use their machine for web browsing, emailing, using an office suite program, or just uses it for streaming. With these CPUs, you can play eSport titles like CSGO, League of Legends, Dota, and some indie games, even though there are quite a few demanding indie games out there as well. So in this category, the CPUs I would recommend are the Intel Pentium G3258, the G4400, the AMD Athlon X4 860K, and the FX6300. These CPUs will easily handle all the tasks that I mentioned before with no problems at all. Also, if you were to pair these with a capable discrete graphics card, such as an R9 380, you would actually have quite the gaming machine on your hands which will indeed allow you to play new games, albeit not at 1080p ultra 60fps, but with some compromises, you'll be able to get an acceptable and playable experience. I actually still use my FX6300 in my secondary rig, which I use as a Steam machine, uh, home theater PC, and it still works like a champ. I have that processor paired with an overclock 950, and sometimes when I just want to have a nice chill gaming session on the couch, I'll play on that instead. And I don't really care if I can't run with all the settings cranked up high. It's just a, it's just a really nice experience having to sit on a couch with a big with a big screen display in front of you. So in this category, it's really up to your preference what CPU you get. They should all perform relatively the same, and in some situations, Intel CPUs may work better and vice versa. However, the only thing I will point out to you is that the upgrade path offered from Intel will be significantly better to what AMD is currently offering, unfortunately. For example, if you had the Pentium G3258 and down the road you wanted some more CPU power, then you could easily swap for an i5-4690K or a 4790K, or say you went with the Skylake Pentium G4400, then you will have better future proof your system since you can swap that out for a Skylake 6500 or 6700 or if you're just waiting for KB Lake, since that one will probably also be on the LG1151 socket. Whereas, if you went with an AMD FX6300, the only thing you would be able to upgrade to is something like an 8370 or a 9590 or an 8350, which honestly are, co are uh, considerably slower than Intel's offerings right now. So moving on to one step above that, in this scenario, these CPUs are recommended for the gamer that is on a budget but still wants a processor that will offer them the best bang for their buck and really good performance in gaming. In this category, I recommend getting an i3-4170, an i3-6100, or FX-8350. Keep in mind that the aspect of the upgrade path that I mentioned in the last scenario is also valid here, except on the AMD side, you're essentially at a dead end. If you exclusively bat for Team Red, then the only thing you can do at this point would be to wait until Zen is released and take it from there. However, Zen will be on new AM4 socket, so therefore you will need a new motherboard and new RAM, which will be much more expensive than just swapping out for another Intel CPU on the same platform. The Intel Core i3s are also a nice step up from the Pentium dual-core CPUs because they have hyper-threading technology enabled. 
and therefore those two extra threads will definitely help with newer titles that like to take advantage of the extra threads or absolute, absolutely need more than two threads for the game to run. The Skylake i3-6100 is a great processor since its performance is better, if not completely on par with the classic quad-core 2500K. So with a system like this, you can save quite a lot of money and then allocate the rest of the sum towards a good performing GPU. This will result in a system that will allow you to play new games at higher or ultra settings at 1080p 60fps. Moving past that category, the next set of CPUs I'm going to be talking about will be the best gaming CPUs you can possibly buy for your money. These processors are none other than Intel's Core i5 quad cores. Basically any Core i5 on the market will fulfill this role. If you're someone that wants an i5 but isn't interested in overclocking, then I suggest you go for a 4460, 4690, 6500, or 6600. These are non-K i5s. If you are interested in overclocking and wish to get the most out of your processor, then I would suggest you go for a K-skewed i5 such as the 4690K or 6600K. Again, I mentioned both the older Haswell platform CPUs and the newer Skylake platforms so you can decide which one suits your preferences the best. And also keep in mind if you're going to be doing any overclocking then a good aftermarket cooler is highly recommended. One of the reasons why the Core i5s are considered to be the best gaming CPUs you can buy is because the Core i7s offer little improvement in gaming over the i5s. Many consider the price gap between the i5 and i7 unjustifiable for minimal improvements and I definitely agree with that. When I was in the process of upgrading to the Skylake platform, I wasn't sure whether or not to whether or not I wanted to get the i5 or i7. I was definitely considering getting an i7 because I do like to do content creation and sometimes do like some 3D modelings as a hobby. However, at the time there was limited stock and here in Canada, the i7 6700K was around $200 more than the i5 6600K. Another reason why the i5s are great for the money is because you have four physical four powerful physical cores. And you also won't get a bottleneck when pairing with the high-end GPU. I can vouch for the bold statement which the i5s represent as being, the, as being single handedly the best gaming CPUs you can buy considering that I own one myself. Having my 6600K overclocked to 4.6GHz and paired with an R9 390, this has been an amazing combo for gaming. I can easily max out the newest games at 1080p 60fps. Or and get well above 60fps and even 1440p is a great experience. Another thing I want to clear up is that you don't necessarily need an i7 if you want to do any sort of streaming. Sure, having those extra threads would help taking the load off the CPU, but if you've seen my other video where I go through the settings I use in OBS, then you'll know that with Qu Intel QuickSync, it makes the job much easier and you'll barely hit take a hit on your performance. I'll have a link in the video description if you're interested in checking that out. Video editing is also very do doable considering I make content on this PC and I upload it to YouTube. Unless you want your videos to be rendered as fast as possible, then an i5 will also work great in regards to these programs. Alright, so at the top of the line, we have pretty much the best CPUs you can buy with your money. These CPUs are for the person that wants the best of the best. In this category, I recommend the Intel Core i7-4790K the i7-6700K, the i7-5820K, i7-5930K, and the Core i7-5960X. These CPUs are aimed at the consumer that doesn't just game but spends a vast majority of their time doing a lot of content creation and wants the fastest rendering times so they can swiftly get through their projects. These CPUs will also work great if you're someone that needs to do a lot of uh, 3D modeling, intense simulations, calculations, and compiling. These processors have much more cache as well, so overall, you can expect better all-around performance. Another set of processors that I wanted to mention were the Xeon processors. They're essentially like their i7 counterparts, except they don't have integrated graphics and can't be overclocked. Just note that the jump to having a monstrous i7 in your rig won't come without a substantial cost. So just keep those things in mind when you're shopping around, looking at a CPU for your next build or upgrade. Well guys, that pretty much covers what I had to say in regards to which CPU you should buy. I hope this video help was helpful to you, and if it was and you found it informative, then, hit, then leave me a thumbs up. Let me know any thoughts or questions down below in the comment section, and consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for watching guys, take care and I'll see you in the next one.